Supreme SME. And open source software, the open source web development agency based in Washington, D.C. She has worked with development of a variety of functional schemes and now the debate in that So it's time to join me to welcome you to Tara. Um, she basically just told everything I was going to say, but I am going to talk about client management, and I am going to help work out. So uh, my impetus for this presentation was seeing a statistic at MozCon a couple of years ago, which is that only about seven percent of clients are satisfied with a web development firm, which is super depressing. And I think a lot of the reason for discontent isn't about the product; it's not about what we're building for them. It's more about how we're working with them and the relationships that we have. So I am going to talk about improving relationships and having more positive client relationships. So when I initially started creating this presentation, I made a list because I love making lists. And I made like a 16-page list of like all the sort of tips and tricks and tools that we use at my firm to manage clients. But I realized that what has really improved the way that we work with clients is to change the way that we think about it. So my firm was founded about 25 years ago, and a lot of the team have worked together for over a decade. I have worked at a company for over 19 years. I am older than I look. So it's great that we've worked together for a long time. We get along great, we love each other, we're successful, but we've developed a lot of habits over time. And we realize that a lot of the things we were doing were because we always done them that way. So over the past five years, we made a really concerted effort to rethink every facet of the company. And one area where we made huge changes is in how we manage our clients. So we decided to focus on a more humane, reasonable approach to client management. And that has really ended up with us building much stronger, more positive partnerships with our clients. And it increases their satisfaction and it also makes us feel better about the work that we're doing with them. So one caveat before I start, I am American. Many of my clients are American or Western. So some of what works for us, some of what makes sense for us, is not going to make sense for you and your clients, and that's fine. What I would like you to take away from this presentation is just an openness to think about the habits that you have um, and be, be open to changing things that aren't getting you to where you want to be as a company. Um, I'm also from Washington, D.C. I talk really fast, and I only need 40 minutes, and we're running, um, we're running high, so I'm going to talk quickly. If you don't catch all of this, I will post the presentation with my speaker notes for you guys. I have business cards over here. I'm a really friendly, nice person. If there's some way that I can help you, please reach out. I am more than happy to help with anything. Go to coffee and be awesome. Okay, so in our approach to client management, there are three main values that we find important, and that is honesty, generosity, and openness. So the first one, honesty, in business, this tends to translate more as transparency. So obviously, not lying to your clients is a great start, um, but more commonly, this is about thinking about how you can be upfront in your communications, and this is especially helpful in setting expectations for price and process. Also being generous, and this is with your knowledge and expertise. All of you are experts in what you do, and I know this, because I, I read your blogs, you mentor, you share at conferences like this, and that is important. It's why your clients are also a really important audience. Um, and we want to share our, our knowledge and our expertise with them and educate them on the world. And the third one is the openness, and this is being open to creative solutions. So conflict avoidance is very natural, right? You're uncomfortable, you just want to get out of that situation. But that can really lead to incremental thinking, where you're just thinking the quickest way to resolve the conflict, instead of maybe taking more time and thinking about the most ideal solution. So and this doesn't need to be like a grand gesture or super innovative, but we're just going to talk about ways to kind of think for a situation and come to outcomes that are better for both your client and your team. So those are three values. We're going to talk about how to apply them in development. So the first one, um, being honest is really 
really about setting your expectations with compliance. This applies to really all aspects of working with them, but we're going to focus on uh, price and process, and that includes your scope of the rules and timelines. So price transparency, what are your clients paying for? Um, it's really useful to provide a cost breakdown, so even if you have a situation where you have a uh, fixed budget, breaking down where their costs are going are really helpful, not only to help them prioritize, um, but it also educates them on web development in the long term. So in, even in situations where um, you're doing sprints, it can be really helpful to um, look at things as many projects as well, just to, to help them understand their scope of different development projects in general, so that in the future they know what to expect. Um, also, finding errors that might seem overpriced. So, and this can be areas where you need to do a lot of setup work in order to make the, the change. So, setting up environments, quality control, uh, code management, research, icebergs, which are tasks where the client is seeing you make the visual changes small, but it requires a lot of work. Um, explaining that to them, and also really special circumstances. So, any aspects of their particular site. Um, their, you know, tech stack or use case that will take extra time. Um, and there is that same underpriced. So your client is probably not going to complain, hey, you're not charging me enough. Um, but in some situations, you can set really bad expectations by undercharging. So, for instance, with those iceberg tasks where the first time you did it, it took a lot of groundwork, the second time maybe the change is quite quick because you've already done that preparational work. So they may wonder why are you charging me so little last time? The first time I asked for this, you know, it was way more expensive. So just make sure you're communicating that. Um, and also sometimes you over-service clients intentionally. You're excited about their mission, it's an opportunity for you to learn something new. Whatever the reason, let them know <laughs> that you're going to be doing free work so that they don't expect it in the future also, so they can appreciate that from you. Um, price is often the area where you get into the most conflict with clients. Um, so try to be as honest and transparent as you possibly can. Because if you're going to have a disagreement with the client for money, you want to do that before you do work for them. So process transparency is really about being upfront about how you work. And it's often your first opportunity to educate clients, especially those who are new to web development process. Um, so we want to explain the process when we begin with them, what, and this can be part of your either introduction with the client, part of your proposal, part of your contract, work it in whenever you can, what are the phases or steps involved in your work? Um, is your client going to have a, a big site to look at? Are there costs to look at? Are you working in sprints? Explain to them what the deliverables will be and what your process is. What tools are you using? need them to review comps and admission? Are there multiple production environments? Are you doing a project management tool that you use? Let them know how they're going to be working with you. Um, your scope is the most important <laughs> expectation you can set with clients. You want to explain every single thing that you can think of, uh, but you also want to talk about what's excluded. So your scope may be, um, for instance, if you have a redesign that does not include parts of the existing sites, if they issue an RFP and part of their RFP is no longer included in the project, or sometimes um, you know, content development or migration can be an area where maybe your team or their team might do it. Just make sure those things are really clearly outlined in your scope. Uh, deliverables. This is more important than you would think. So, Clients may literally not know what a comparable wireframe is. They should describe what these things are. What should they expect? How many of each deliverable are there? How many rounds of edits? What are the review versions? Is it in phases? Will it be a beta product? And then what is the client role? So tell them what you're expecting from them. Um, should they give you feedback? Do you expect edits? Do you need approval from them? What role do they play? Timelines. Um, so this is a bit of a difficult area. So as you guys I'm sure know, timelines are really hard. It's really hard now. And it's going to take you to something that you never built before. So our proposals or our contracts literally say this timeline is going to get thrown out. 
this is a tentative timeline, and we think your project, and we don't even put dates, we put like months. So we're like, we think it's like a nine month build or whatever, but this is not real. Um, so it's good to set the expectation of how long overall it will take, but we all know that you know, things change as we go. And also your clients need deadlines too. Um, so when you, when you set that dead, when you set the timeline, make sure to say when you need feedback from them, when you need approval for them, and also help them understand that sometimes if they delay their deadline, your deadline is, the reciprocal deadline for you is, could be delayed even more. So let's say your client is supposed to get you approval for a call by Friday. If they take an extra three days, you may need an extra two weeks to meet your next deadline because you have other work booked in. So and you may not need that time. Your team may be wide open and it's totally fine. But make sure to set the expectation that just because they're a day late doesn't mean it only changes your, your timeline by a day. Um, yeah. So being clear about how you work helps your clients uh, know what to expect, and it brings up any gaps in process between how you work and how your client works, or between how you work and your client and your client's previous vendors worked. So we're gonna do a little story about being transparent with our clients. Um, so we had a new client. We had a really complicated UI, and this is not it. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the discovery phase talking to them. We had really good talks with them, and we felt like we were on the same page. So we were really surprised when we sent over wireframes to them. They said, can the site be in color? Can we have our logo on the site? I can't click on anything. So our team was like, so the, the instinct here is to say, oh my god, the client is so stupid. They don't even know what a wireframe is. But honestly, we are the experts, and it's our job to explain to them the development process. So we not only really upset the client, we sent them what they thought was a, I don't even know what they thought. They thought it was a broken site that, I, I can't even imagine what they thought, you know, in that situation. And it took us about three weeks to smooth that out and get the whole process back on track. So it is really worth doing that little bit of education for clients we need it. So we talked about being honest, we're going to move on to the second value, which is being generous. Um, and this is educating your clients on web development, development and on your value. So if your clients do not know what you do, if they did, you would be out of play. Having a true partnership with your client does start with sharing your knowledge. So break down what is involved technically in a way that they can understand. This not only really helps them feel included in the process, um, but it also helps, helps them make informed decisions. At the end of the day, it's their project where they have to make decisions. And if they make poorly informed ones, you're, you're all going to suffer and you guarantee So when you first engage your client, like I talked about already, you're going you're gonna to dump all the information on, on them. You're going to be like, this is how we work, this is everything. But that's usually written, and it can be months before you're actually in the build phase, right? You have discovery, you have design. And so I find it really helpful to reiterate process parts as they come up. Like, we're starting the design phase now. We're going to work together. You're going to give us information here. We're going to send you this. You're going to give us approval. And tell them as you go as well to reiterate that, because it gives them context that will help remind them of what you already talked about. Thanks. Um, and with new clients, sometimes you don't really have that trust in place, um, and they may not understand that your recommendations are really coming from an informed professional place. So I think it's helpful to share your reasoning, um, explain to them why you've made the decisions you have for their for the project, and again, this helps them feel included, but it also draws out situations where you actually didn't understand the requirements you have for information. Um, make sure to personalize your level of support. So some clients have no idea of anything about what they're going to do. They have no idea. Some of them, they, you know, have a site on their on the side or um, you know do it as a hobby. Some of them might have worked professionally in web development in some capacity in the past. Get to know them a little bit and make sure you're talking to them on their level. And um, share your mistakes. You know, you I'm guessing. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past, you know, making sites, and your clients don't have all of this experience. So let them know, you know, if you see them heading in the wrong direction, let them know. And you know, I think it's helpful to put the context of the story and help them kind of internalize your advice and make sure themselves in that situation. 
Um, so another story about educating your clients. So this is a long-term client who worked with us for over a decade, and they are we were refining their very, very, very large site, and it was scheduled to be about 10 months. Um, they know our process. We work with them forever. They're very hands-on. They're very involved. Um, so after months of work, we sent over the beta site, and we couldn't believe their feedback. Here's our content. Why did you move things off the homepage? On the old site, you can see everything on the homepage. The font is too big. We liked it better on the old site. The forms are too simple. Can you make it like the old site? And our team was like, so this client had approved wires, comps, they reviewed sprints. I mean, they had seen this site a million times, and they approved it all. And we were, we were kind of mad, if I'm being honest. Um, and we didn't feel like it was fair. So after um, complaining, we'll call it, for a few minutes, we took a step back, and we thought maybe they don't understand why we made these changes. Uh, so we called them, and we explained to them that having everything on the home page is overwhelming to users. So we improved the navigation and we simplified the homepage. And we talked to them about um, in, increasing their font size to make it easier for users to read, obviously. But for them, they have a really text heavy site, so it's even more important. Um, and then we talked about how long and complex forms increase user abandonment. And so we were trying to improve their conversions by simplifying the forms. And after we explained everything to them, you know what they said? Okay. So that's all, that's all that was missing was that we needed to take more time during the process to explain our rationale to them. And everything works. Uh, this brings us to our third one, which is being open to creative solutions. So every day life with your client is really about solving problems. That is why they hired you. Um, but the daily grind of working with clients can wear you down a little, and sometimes you say okay or say no just to get it over with. Um, but to be, a, to be a great client management, to be a great client manager, um, you do need to be a little more deliberate. You do need to take the time to look at the big picture and try to bring um, more creative solutions. So as I said before, this doesn't need to be super innovative or huge gestures. It's more about being thoughtful. And um, I think most most overarching client issues are really about the fear that the client has. And so we're going to frame some scenarios in those terms and talk about them. So the first one, the client is worried that you're going to do whatever you want and not what they want. Discovery really helps here. So, and I'm American, and we have this, uh, we have this TV channel, which is like, for, it's called HGTV, it's one of our television. And I was watching a show that's called Design Star, it's about interior design. So you hire someone, they come into your house and like, make it pretty. So on this episode I was watching, there were three teams competing with each other. So each team was going to uh, redecorate a client's room, and then the client was going to basically decide the winner, right? Um, and the first step was for each team to interview the client, the couple. Um, and after that part, after the interview, the, the discovery, um, the TV show talked to the client couple, and they said, how are you feeling about this process? And the couple said, we are so excited about team number three. They asked us how we use the space, they asked us about our aesthetic, they really care about us and our lifestyle. And that really stuck with me, because think about this for a second. If this, these, this team had not done any work whatsoever, and the client was already invested in their success. Imagine your client wants you to win. They want, they expect great things from you. All you do is have a conversation with them. That is the power of the discovery process. That is the power of talking to them. Um, and, and when they talk, listen. So don't assume that you know your client's business better than they do. Um, your client's job is to identify problems, and your job is to rephrase what you think they're saying and make sure you get it. Um, this is another area where, where I think I think specs is so run every single one of these um, because improving documentation reassures the client that they are going to get what, what you guys agree on. We find visual examples really helpful, especially for clients who are not really experienced with developments. They may not have the, the right words to use to even have some of these conversations with you. So starting from something visual, starting from some sites that they like maybe, is a good way for you to have these conversations where they don't have the technical terms. Um, using, so even if you're not agile, using some sort of screen 
bridge some sort of iterative process where the client is seeing progress as you go, um, helps them not only really reassure them that they're on track, but it is really the way to not build an entire website that they end up not liking. Um, the next one, the client's here that you're going to ignore. So having a single point of contact, having a client manager who can really build that relationship and act as an advocate for your client. Those are communicating. So the client doesn't really know what you're doing like day in and day out. So sometimes taking a couple minutes to write like a mid-deliverable status update is really reassuring, um, especially for the, the clients who seem a bit nervous. But even if the client completely forgot about you, this is, you know, it's not bad at um, Having check-ins. Solutions. Oh, 
but no relationship is perfect, and sometimes you still end up having disagreements with them. So we want to apply these three, these same three principles to managing conflict when things aren't going well. So the first one is jump in front of bad things. Um, it is usually works better to be proactive and offer a solution instead of kind of pretending that everything's okay. And give your client the opportunity to be understanding. They are people too, and a lot of the time, if you tell them something's wrong, they completely understand and they're completely cool with it. Um, and, and be generous. If you have tons of experience solving these problems, if you can't or won't do what they want, explain to them why. Um, and see if maybe there's an alternative. So we have a lot of people that come to us with what we think are unreasonable requests. Um, and we can try to, find a, try to find some sort of compromise. So perhaps we're like, no, we can't build you a new website in two weeks, but we can make you a landing page. Um, and be open to thinking about things differently, be open to reframing that relationship. So do try to be flexible and accommodate small, unexpected needs, but let them know really clearly and immediately if you don't think that they're being reasonable. And some relationships are genuinely negative or unhealthy. Um, so you do need to think about whether it is possible to have a positive relationship with this client and whether that relationship is worth what it is doing to your team and maybe your own mental health. All right, so being honest, being generous, and being open. Whether you're getting to know a client for the first time or working through an already troubled relationship, be as honest and transparent as you can to set clear, reasonable expectations. Treat the client as a partner by sharing your knowledge, educating them on the work that you're doing together, and go through everyday challenges and in times of conflicts, take a moment and open yourself up to solutions for both you and the client and the happy. And everyone wins. Thank you for coming. Um, so really thank you guys for coming. It's great to see you. I am going to take some questions. This is your time. If you are not comfortable asking a terrible question about your clients in a room full of strangers that's being recorded, I have some business cards over here for you. Feel free to take one and email me anytime. Does anybody have a question? Anybody who's not my husband have a question? Yeah, I saw that. Nice try. Nobody? Okay, cool. Well, thanks again for coming. Good to see you guys. Enjoy the rest of the day.